Okay, this is the first video of our new unit, stoichiometry, my personal favorite unit. Um, first of all, the way you pronounce that is stoichiometry, so make sure you can say it correctly, stoichiometry. Um, and it comes from the Greek word stoichion, which means element, and metron, which means measure. So you'll find out quickly what this unit is all about, is measuring different amounts of substances in a chemical equation. So we had our last unit, which was chemical equations, and the unit before that, which was the mole. This unit kind of combines those two things, and we're going to be um, looking at quantitative relationships. So we'll do, be doing calculations using chemical formulas that are in a balanced chemical equation. So we'll be relating two substances that are connected via a chemical equation. All right, so it'll make more sense as we go through the steps, but it will require lots of calculations and it will require you to use chemical equations, balanced chemical equations. Um, the main piece of new information in today's notes and in this unit is what's called the mole ratio. Um, and that's the ratio between the amount of moles of two substances that are related in a chemical equation. And it has to be balanced and uh, the two substances have, have to be in the same chemical equation uh, for us to relate them. There are other ways if we had you know, a series of reactions we could relate them that way. Um, but here we're just going to be looking at one chemical equation and then relating them with what's called a mole ratio. So to give you an example of this, and this is the only new idea we're talking about today, everything else will kind of be review from the mole. Uh, but the mole ratio here, if we have a chemical equation like this, this is a balanced chemical equation showing the decomposition of water. So water breaks down to form hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, and then to balance it, we needed to put a coefficient of two in front of the water and a coefficient of two in front of the hydrogen, okay? From this one chemical equation, we can derive a number of mole ratios, and that's just relating one substance to another. So we're just going to look at the relationships between one substance and another substance in this chemical equation. So for example, let's first look at the relationship between water and hydrogen. Okay, So uh, water has two moles in the balanced chemical equation and hydrogen also has two moles in the balanced chemical equation. So the mole ratio between water and hydrogen would be a two to two ratio. So notice that the numbers for our mole ratios come from the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. All right, so that's one mole ratio that we can derive from this equation, and there's others we can, right? So if we look at the relationship between water and oxygen, it's a different ratio. So water has a coefficient of two, so that's how we get the two here. Um, oxygen, though, has no coefficient, which we know in chemistry it means there's an invisible one there. So we would put one in the mole ratio. So the ratio for water and oxygen is a two to one ratio. And then you can also compare and derive mole ratios for substances that are on the same side of the chemical equation. So even though hydrogen and oxygen are both products, we can still derive a mole ratio. They're going to be produced in, different, um, in a different ratio. So we would say that there are two moles of hydrogen being produced for every one mole of oxygen. Okay? And the way that this chemical equation works uh, is always going to follow this ratio. So now, or these ratios. So now we can use these ratios in some different calculations to predict the amounts of reactants or products that would either be used or produced in a chemical equation, in a chemical reaction. So this is the main new idea. So this is something you really want to understand how we can use these coefficients to derive these ratios here. All right, so we're going to use those to do some stoichiometric calculations. Um, this is a slide that I usually turn this little flowchart into a handout, just a little strip of paper, like a bookmark. Um, so copy it down in your notes, or if you want to put it on a separate piece of paper and have it handy all the time, just like a little strip of paper, it might be useful for you. But you need to have it in your notes. It's a nice visual for you to see the steps required to do these different types of calculations. Um, and we're going to practice using this today. 
Um, so what it's showing you is it has on the left side it has x's so mass of x and mole of x and on the right side we have mole of y and mass of y so x and y can re represent any two substances that are in your balanced chemical equation it doesn't matter and you can move in any direction you see the arrows go both ways so whatever you're comfortable with I tend to work from left to right so that's how I'll do it in this uh, video but you can go from right to left as well and it'll work just the same all right, so what this says is in order to get from mass of x to mole of x, you actually already know how to do that. You just need to use the molar mass from the periodic table, right? That's something we learned in the mole. To convert from mass to moles or vice versa, we would use the molar mass as our conversion factor. Notice it's the same thing over here when you're doing mole and mass of y, you use the molar mass from the periodic table. So again, that's something you already knew. The only new thing on this little flowchart is right in the middle, which we just talked about in the last slide. Mole of x to mole of y. If you're going to switch between those two, that's when you would use the mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation, which we just looked at in the previous slide. Um, so I know it's going to seem weird for me to say this, but this slide right here, this tiny little flowchart, pretty much the entire stoichiometry unit is right here. This is all we're going to be doing for the entire unit over and over and over again in different ways. Um, and you'll see that today, you'll see that in the next couple weeks of notes as well. Um, one really big thing to remember though in yellow here, you have to have a balanced chemical equation to do any stoichiometry problem. So in this unit for homework assignments and quizzes, the first thing you should do is ask yourself if you have a balanced chemical equation. If you do not, you need to write that because it's something you're going to need to do these calculations. All right. The reason we kind of have to go this weird route here, you might think, well, can't we just convert mass of x to mass of y? Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a conversion to do that. And the reason is, if you think about it, like that reaction we were looking at with water breaking down into hydrogen and oxygen, if we were trying to convert um, a mass of water to a mass of oxygen, it doesn't work just to go directly, directly because water and oxygen have different masses, right? If you add up their their masses, their molar mass of water is not the same as the molar mass of oxygen. And that's going to be the case for any of the substances in your balanced chemical equation. They all have different molar masses. So the only way that you can relate them to each other is through the mole ratio in the balanced chemical equation. The balanced chemical equation gives you a relationship between the two substances. So in order to use that mole ratio, you need to convert the substances to moles. So let's say if we were starting with a mass of water here, we would first need to convert that mass of water to moles, right? And then we could relate the moles of water to moles of oxygen, and then we could convert the moles of oxygen back to a mass to calculate the mass of oxygen, for example, that was produced in the reaction. So it does seem a little bit roundabout um, but that's what we have to do to do these stoichiometric calculations. But I think you'll see that it's uh, they're all kind of the same. So once you get used to the process, you'll be able to apply that to any problem. So we're going to go through a few of the different types. These are all of the different variations that you would see of this uh, these conversions. You'll just have different um, equations to work with, but the process will be the same. So we're going to go over the four types of conversions that could be possible from that um, flowchart. The first one we'll do is the easiest. It would just be a multimole -mul conversion. So this is an example that you might see on your homework where it gives you an amount in moles of one of the substances and it's asking you to convert to moles of a different substance. All right, so you didn't know how to do this previously. So let's look back at our little flowchart here. So in our problem, we're given a mole amount of one substance and we're being asked to convert to a mole amount of a different substance. So you can see here the way we'll use the flowchart for this problem is just to go from mole of x to mole of y. It's only going to require one step and that step is the mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation. The rest of the calculation is just going to be dimensional analysis. So that's why we spent so much time. This unit is all dimensional analysis. One other thing to remember, too, is that we have to have a balanced chemical equation to do any problem. So before we start this, right, we know we're going to need a mole ratio. The only way we know the mole ratio is if we have a balanced chemical equation. So there it is. And that's what you'll want to do first before you start any problem. 
So we're going to start with the number that we're given here, 5.49 moles of oxygen. And remember, in order to convert to moles of water, we just need one step, and that one step is the mole ratio. So thinking about dimensional analysis, I have moles of O2 here. So in my conversion factor, I want to put it on the bottom because I want it to cancel out. And then I'm going to put moles of water on top because that's the unit I want. The way you get the numbers is from the balanced chemical equation. So I'm going to put that there. So the reason we get a 2 here for water is because there's a coefficient of a 2 here in the balanced chemical equation. So the numbers here come directly from the balanced chemical equation. You just take that 2 and you put it there. Remember, no number in front means it's a 1. You take that and you put that there. The way we set this up, again, dimensional analysis told us moles of O2 is here, so we should put it in the bottom. And then we put the moles we want on top. We want water. So now you can see the moles of O2 will cancel. It's going to give us moles of H2O, which is what we wanted. So now you would just type this into your calculator. I would recommend you try to do it right now along with the video. So you're going to type in 5.49 times 2 equals, you can go ahead and pause as we go through these to make sure you get the right answer, uh, but we type that in. Remember sig figs, you want to go with three sig figs because you always match the number you're given. So we should get 11.0 moles of H2O as our answer. Okay, so you need to share your work very clearly. Um, you need to have correct sig figs and units in your final answer and please box your final answer. All right, so that's the simplest type of conversion of mole to mole conversion. So another type of conversion we could be asked to do is a mole to mass conversion. So in this type of problem, we're given a mole amount, 3.3 moles of O2, and we're being asked to convert that to grams of hydrogen gas. So if we look back at our flowchart, we're given a mole amount, and we're being asked to convert that to a mass of a different substance, right? It's not mass of the same thing, it's mass of a different thing. So we have to go all the way over here. So this is going to require two steps. First, we're going to need to convert moles of x into moles of y. Then we're going to need to convert moles of y to mass of y, just using its molar mass. This step you already know how to do. So let's see, we have our balanced chemical equation. We're going to start with the number we're given, 3.3 moles of O2. Right? The first step is a mole to mole conversion. That's what you have to do first. To get from one substance to another, you have to go through moles. So again, dimensional analysis, think about how you'd want to set that up. If you want to pause and try to work ahead, you can go for that. So I'm going to put moles of O2 in the bottom, moles of H2 in the top, because that's what I want. And then remember where these numbers came from, right? If you're doing a mole ratio, the numbers come from the balanced chemical equation. So we got the 2 for hydrogen from here, and then we got the 1 for oxygen from here, invisible 1. Right. If you stopped there, your moles of O2 would cancel, and you would be left with moles of H2 as your answer. We want grams of H2, so we have to go another step. Now we have to convert moles of H2 to grams of H2, which you already knew how to do in the mole unit. This is where you use the molar mass. So we'll put, again, following our dimensional analysis rules, we'll put our moles of H2 in the bottom to cancel out that. And then we uh, use our periodic table to calculate the molar mass of H2 using its formula here. So 2 times the mass of H on your periodic table is 1.01. .01. So that's going to give you a molar mass of 2.02. .02. So this number, 2.02, .02, comes from the periodic table. And remember, any time you use those numbers off the periodic table, it's always for one mole. Okay. So the first conversion factor is the mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation. The second one here is the molar mass from the periodic table. Now we're ready to calculate. So again, if you want to pause and try on your own first, we're going to type in 3.3 times 2 times 2.02 .02 equals. And we'll multiply all the numbers in the top, divide any numbers in the bottom. We have ones here, so we don't have to worry about those. Number of sig figs will match this number. So you'll end up with two sig figs, and you should get... 13 grams of hydrogen as your final answer. Two sig figs. All right, so that's a mole to mass. Another variation you could see is mass to mole, which is the opposite of what we just did. 
All right, so this one will be very similar, but in this case, we're given mass of water, in this case, 36 grams of water, and we're being asked to convert to moles of hydrogen. So let's take a look at our flow chart. This time we're starting with mass of one substance, and we're being asked to convert it to moles of a different substance. Right? We're not being asked to convert it to moles of the same thing. That would be really easy. We're being asked to convert it to moles of something else. So it's going to require two steps again. And like I said, this is the opposite of what we just did. So first, we'll start with our 36 grams of water. right? And in order to convert it to something else, remember, we're going to need the mole ratio. So we first want to convert this to moles so that we can then compare it to hydrogen. So the first step is going to be converting the grams of H2O into moles of H2O. And remember, we do that using the periodic table. So I'm going to put grams of H2O in the denominator so that it cancels out, put moles of H2O in the top so that I can use that later. Um, and the way I get the 18.02 is from the periodic table. That's the molar mass of H2O. So 2 times hydrogen plus oxygen gives you 18.02 grams. Anytime you use those numbers off the periodic table, it's going to be one mole. So if you stopped here, you have moles of H2O. We want moles of H2, so we need to keep going. All right, so then we're going to use, in order to get from moles of one thing to moles of another, we're going to use the mole ratio. Right? So I'll put moles of H2O in the bottom, moles of H2 in the top. How do we get these numbers here, 2 and 2? Where did those come from? Balanced chemical equation. Remember, we take that 2 here, put it with hydrogen, take the 2 with H2O, put it with H2O, and that's how we get our mole ratio. Notice this ratio, a 2 to 2 ratio, this could be reduced to 1 to 1. However, I would advise you to keep it as 2 to 2, and I will always keep it like that in answer keys and everything, because it's easier for you to look back and see how you got those numbers. If you reduce them, they won't match the numbers you have in your balanced chemical equation. So even though we know that this could reduce, please keep it as 2 to 2. That's my recommendation. Right? So when we type this into the calculator, notice we have the units we want now. So we're done with our setup. Um, any numbers in the top, you're going to multiply. Any in the bottom, you divide. So the order doesn't matter, but you can type it in. You can do 36. I tend to work from left to right, so I would do 36 divided by 18.02 times 2 divided by 2, or you can just not do that because you know that they'll cancel out. So go ahead and try to type that in. See what you get to two sig figs here. Answer should get 2.0 moles of H2. All right, hopefully it's going good so far. If you have questions during this time, you should write them down. You can email me or leave a comment on Google Classroom, um, or you can come to the Q&A session and ask them there. All right, we have one more type of problem to go through, the big one, a mass-to-mass -mass problem. So here, we're given a mass of hydrogen, and we are asked to solve for a mass of water. Okay, so to do this, let's go back to our flow chart. We're given a mass of one substance. We're trying to solve for the mass of another substance. We're going to go all the way over here. So this is going to take three steps. We're going to need three conversions. Okay. First, we need to convert from mass to mole using the molar mass. Then we use our mole ratio to convert to the different substance. Then we convert mole to mass again using the new molar mass for the new substance. Okay. All right, so we're going to start with our 10.0 grams of H2. First, we want to convert that to moles. So we'll use its molar mass from the periodic table. So the 2.02 came from the periodic table. Then we'll do the mole ratio. Right, So moles of H2 goes down here. We want uh, water, so we'll put moles of water here. Mole ratio is 2 to 2. Those numbers came from the balanced chemical equation. Right? If we stopped here, we would have moles of water, which we've already done that type of problem. This time we're being asked to go all the way to mass of water. So we need one more conversion, converting this moles of water to mass of water, grams of water. So we're going to put moles of H2O in the denominator of the next one. And the mass is going to be the molar mass from the periodic table, 18.02 is the molar mass of water. 
going to be per one mole since anytime you use the periodic table it's for one mole of that substance. When you type this in you'll do 10.0 divided by 2.02 .02 times 2 divided by 2 times 18.02 .02 equals how many sig figs should you use? Three sig figs. See what we get. 89.2 grams of water. Hopefully you got that. All right. And that is the last type of problem. So I hope you understand um, the, the importance of these types of problems. Um, you can see that you can convert from one substance to another. So these types of calculations are really, really important when you're in the lab. For example, if you want to know, you know, let's say you want to produce um, a certain amount, like this problem. Let's say we want 10 grams of hydrogen. Okay, We need to produce that much. So this type of calculation tells you how much water you need to start with in your reaction to get the amount of hydrogen that you want. Right? So if we wanted to make 10 grams of hydrogen, we do this calculation and then we say, okay, we need to use at least 89.2 grams of water to begin with to get this amount of hydrogen. We're going to learn later that that yield might not be exactly right, and that's what we're going to talk about next week in percent yield, um, but theoretically that would be the amount you could produce. Right? So these types of calculations are really useful to tell you how to set up um, how to set up a reaction in the lab or to see how much you should expect to produce. All right, so your homework assignment uh, it will take some time as you can see. Um, they're pretty lengthy calculations. Um, in, this is just number one from the homework just so you can see what it looks like. Remember you always need to start with a balanced chemical equation. So this number one is nice because you're given the equation. That might not always be the case. Uh, but I just wanted to run through and make sure you understand the vocabulary here for A, B, and C. Uh, remember, you need to do this in your notebook, and then you'll take a picture of it to turn it in. But you don't have to write uh, all of these words. Like when it says, so for number one, just write the balanced chemical equation. Okay, you don't have to write these words, just write that. And then for A, you can write this sentence, how many moles of sodium bromide could be produced from 0.172 moles of bromine. You could write the sentence out, or you could just rewrite it like this, like how we've been doing in the notes. You can just fill in, um, you can just leave out all the words, but just put the starting amount with its units equals question mark, whatever it's asking you for. Um, now I need to flip through this really fast. Okay, so you could just paraphrase that. So you could put 0.172 mole um, bromine, but be careful, bromine's BR2, okay, and then equals question mark mole sodium bromide, which is NABR. That's how you could put your, the question for A, and then you'll do your calculation. You need to show your work with all your units, correct sig figs, box your answer, okay. So I just want to go through A. It looks like what type of conversion is A? It says how many moles of sodium bromide could be produced from 0.172 moles of bromine. Well, if you read carefully and look at the units, it's a mole to mole conversion. So that one's only going to require one step, right? B says how many grams of sodium iodide are required to produce 28.2 grams of iodine. So this one is a mass, you have grams here, to mass conversion. That's a big one. You're going to need three steps there, okay? Part C, how many grams of bromine are required to react with 98.2 grams of sodium iodide? That is another mass to mass conversion, right? So you'll kind of start seeing some of the same conversion factors pop up, but try not to make any short shortcuts because uh, you might mess up a little bit. And be careful calculating your molar masses. That's a common place uh, for things to go wrong. But please, please, please let me know if you have questions. All right. Good luck.